Hey, welcome back to my channel. Appreciate you stopping by and checking this out. Subscribe and thumbs up, all that jazz too. So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this uh, soldered on antenna. I'm just kind of tired of it. Look at, look at, you see that? The ground strap is completely broken. And now the active element is starting to move around a little bit. So this is all, this is all not gonna work anymore. So when that ground strap starts to break loose and those, those wires in there start to fray and break, it changes the uh, antenna. So this VTX basically has no range anymore. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. And we're going to put this, uh, this little male connector in its place so that we can use uh, a regular dipole antenna with the UFL connector. So... That's what this show's about today, and I appreciate you stopping by, and let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is get a uh, soldering iron nice and hot, and I've got the uh, 45 angle uh, tip on here. So we're just going to desolder this old one here. Okay. And now I'll just take away some of that. Take away some of that excessive solder. And we're going to hit it with some flux paste. I've got some. This is what I'm using. I'm just going to take a little bit of that and get in here. Doesn't take much. I'm running my soldering iron up to about 275 degrees Celsius. Okay. All right, so we got that all cleaned off. Come in with a little more paste. And now we're gonna hit it with some nice solder. Uh, this is the solder I'm using. If you can see that or not. So I wanna get some, some decent quality solder on there now. Get a nice clean tip. Okay. Now I'm going to change tips. I'm going to go from this angled tip to a sharp tip. And now we're ready to put our component on. Okay. And before we do, we're just going to just going to put some more flux on there. Okay. And now the, the component we're putting on, that, that male connector, which is microscopic. <laughs> All right, so here's our, here's our male connector. And then you see, you see that, you see that line in the middle? That's the active element. So that's going to go to this tab right here. Okay. So you got the two grounds on each side and then the active element there. So we need to make sure that that, the orientation of that piece is, is, you know, correct. So there's the, the active element in the center. We're going to rotate that around and set it down on there. Okay. And now we're going to hit the, uh, the ground pad right here. We're just going to heat it up enough to soak it in. And there's plenty of flux on there, so it should bond the piece together. But we need to make sure we hold it down with tweezers so it don't run off. Okay. 
Okay, so now that ground is on, and now this active element is last. I'm gonna get the ground on the other side. See if I get this in the camera for you so you can see what I'm doing. And then you want to make sure now I'm, I'm hitting this tip dip over here to make sure that my uh, tip is nice and clean. We don't want any debris or gunk on it. And we definitely don't want too much solder because if solder comes up and touches that brass component above it, you know, the, the barrel for the... That's going to be bad news. Okay, now the active element, I'm just going to put a, a little dab of solder right, right where it needs to go. I'm trying to film this for you, but my hands are... Okay, so now... We have uh, we have our UFL mail on there, and it's it's secured. It ain't going anywhere. It's soldered on all three sides. So we got the active element, and then the two grounds. So what we want to do now is we want to get our meter out. If you don't have a meter that can do continuity check, I I'd advise you to get one. Uh, if you're going to be doing stuff like this, you definitely want to have a meter. And we're going to just check the ground and then that active element before we plug this in. Okay, if we hear this, then we know we got a problem. So, because you got to watch out how much solder you got on here, because you don't want that solder to flow underneath that connector all the way around, because it will. So you want to make sure that that, sorry, you got to make sure that that, you have just enough solder to do each edge and then the active element because if you go too much then it's going to go all the way around so that should be that should be ground the other thing we can do is we can take this ground wire we can put one lead on it okay so we got our lead on holding the ground wire okay and then we can touch each ground on each side make sure that that barrel is grounded and not the active element okay so we should be good to plug that in. I'm just going to make sure one last check and I'm going to, I'm going to do a continuity check on the, the uh, five volt supply. Okay. So did that and uh, this is ready to power up. So let's go ahead and power this up and see if we get anything in the goggles. All right, before we power up this VTX, we got to make sure that our antenna is connected. You don't want to, you don't want to power up a, a VTX without the antenna on. Uh, there's a, a certain amount of ohms that has to be on that. So there has to be a certain amount of resistance. So now, yeah, that's going to come out the quad nice and neat. And if I want to, I can put, I don't, I don't do hot, uh, hot glue. A lot of, a lot of people I see online, they, they suggest to put a blob of hot glue on here. I don't because this, especially this VTX, this VTX gets really hot, really quick. Um, and it just melts the hot glue. Uh, I use goop. Uh, this is a uh, modeling, uh, glue, you know, and it's, uh, it, it, you can get it off of there if you need to, but it, it does a great job and it can handle getting kind of hot. Um, I don't worry about it. Uh, this is going to work a lot better and I'd rather have this, you know, be a little bit flexible to, to take a hit. So now we're, we're good. So let's go ahead and get this powered up. All right, so I got my trusty spectator goggles. I'm gonna go ahead and power the VTX up. And I have a, I have a fan blowing on this, okay? Because this VTX gets hot pretty quick. A lot of VTX get hot pretty quick. So we got, we got good strong video and uh, everything's good. And actually, I have a lot better video quality than what I had before. Even even this close, um, I would have you know striations through the uh, through the screen. You could see like just like a a harmonic kind of movement of striations, if you will. I don't know if if that works for you. You can understand what I mean. But that's uh, that's it. 
Go ahead and take the power off. Now I use a I use a uh, this is my power supply. I got this done from the thrift store for like a dollar. Uh, it's five volts out at two amps, so it's perfect for doing any peripherals. You can fire up a a flight controller, a VTX, a camera, uh, a whole bunch of stuff, and it always gives you five volts. Just make sure that you don't touch your ground and hot together, and then you can just plug that in and put it on a switch. I got a bench switch over here, but yeah, that's kind of a a way you can do things instead of you know having to hook up a lipo uh, but yeah this vtx is now good to go i'm i'm happy with it. it the video quality right off the bat i can tell is a lot better now i'm not having to deal with this piece of junk antenna so and then i got these you, you get five of them you get five of these in a pack yeah I, I, i've used two but you can see that they come in a five pack so that's kind of nice um I know the Rex 80 is my next project because it has a garbage antenna hooked up to it that's all broken. So we're going to go with this style. And hey, if you have any questions, let me know. I hope this was helpful to you that you can see that the, uh, you know, the active element and the ground pads and, and it's literally a ground pad, you know, I, ho I hope this helped you out. If you liked it, you know, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you hate it, <laughs> give it a thumbs down. It all works. Have a good one.